Welcome to the Karma Indiegogo campaign. So what I aim to do in this video is to give you an overview of the eight modules that are included in the book. We've spoken a lot about the fact that there's eight modules and there's a lot of variety in ways that you can customize and tweak them to make them infinitely replayable. But what I haven't spoken about in a lot of detail is what the modules actually are. To give you an idea of the kinds of stories and, and sort of adventures that you can go on and stories that you can tell playing this game. So what I aim to do in this video is just to go through the eight modules that are included in the book, bearing in mind that there are obviously stretch goals where we can unlock more, but let's look at the eight that you get as a guarantee when you get your uh, copy of the book. So the first module we're going to look at is a module called Black Friday. Now Black Friday is about a group of survivors who have barricaded themselves inside a supermarket. So think things like The Mist or Dawn of the Dead or The Walking Dead or anything really. The variety in this module is huge, but let's look at the character sets that we have available for Black Friday. You can either play as a family unit, so your sort of standard family characters who've all got their own complex relationships with one another, or you can be the night shift workers or the night staff inside the supermarket. And that is interesting because you also have this sort of um, professional relationships that develop with them. So things like jealousy or um, resentment towards your manager, that sort of thing can be built into that module. Pretty exciting. Moving on to the next module, we have The Haunting. Now, The Haunting is about a mansion that's stood abandoned for years, and it's supposedly haunted. The rumors are flooding around the small town that uh, there's something terrible inside this mansion, and it's up to the players to sort of uncover that mystery as they go. So think things like The Amitable Horror or The Shining, but let's look at the character sets. They're pretty exciting character sets for this module. You can either be the family unit moving into this new house, so you can be the parent, step-parent, Child, stepchild, grandparent, the boy or the girlfriend of the child, you know, sneaking in through the window at night to visit the teenage daughter or teenage son, that sort of thing. You can also play as a TV uh, show, like one of those terrible ghost TV shows. You can play as the crew. So normally those shows don't find anything, except this time they will find something. And then you've got roles like the host, the skeptic, the camera person, the historian, the priest, going around burning sage and blessing the house and uh, trying to cast the demons out. Pretty exciting stuff. You can also play the advanced variant of um, The Haunting, which is where half the players play the, the haunters or the ghosts, and the other half play the living. This is a little more complicated, but um, it can sort of lead to some very interesting stories, and the way that the ghosts can sort of influence the scenes of the living characters and vice versa is pretty sort of exciting and different. So, the next module we'll take a look at is The Cold Winds of Chikasika. And this is a, if you've ever sort of read any of the stories by H.P. Lovecraft or played any of the games like Elder Sign or uh, Mansions of Madness, this is that sort of story. It's about a group of people who are trapped inside a creepy museum during the storm of the century in London. And they've locked themselves into the reading room. And there's this mysterious new exhibit that no one quite knows what, is, what it's all about. And there's sort of eerie noises that are appearing in the night and uh, from random places in the museum. And there you can play as one of two character sets. You can either be the staff of the museum, so people like the curator, the researcher, archaeologist, librarian, security guard, or you can play visitors to the museum who've been locked in during this terrible storm. So foreign dignitaries, elderly locals, tourists, school teachers, teenagers, vagrants, and uh, even university students. So lots of variety there with the potential for interesting and strained relationships between the characters, which is pretty exciting. So the next module is Paradise. Paradise is about a group of survivors who are plane crashed on uh, a desert island. And uh, they may be alone, they may be not, there's something strange happening on the island. Will they be able to get, up, get off? Will they survive? Those are the sorts of questions and stories that we'll explore in Paradise. There's one big character set for Paradise where you can choose to play a combination of passengers and crew, basically the people who survived. So we have some of the crew of the ship, of the plane, excuse me, people like the pilots, the air stewards and stewardesses, that sort of thing. And then the travelers on the plane. So we have traveling business people, drug mules, stowaway, mother, father, child, convicts and in transit and police officers that are accompanying them, musicians, reality TV personalities, lots of interesting character types in this module, which uh, makes every story and every time you play it very, very different. Because so much of this particular module comes from those relationships between the characters and the different sort of attributes that they have, which will lend to survival on the island and potentially finding... Uh, rescue. The next module is Gemini. This is one we've spoken about quite a bit on social media, and this is where you and your crew are sort of uh, astronauts on the ISV Gemini, and 24 hours ago there was another spacecraft which started sending out a distress signal, a mayday signal, and suddenly something terrible happened. 
there was a, a, an awful, terrifying sound that played over the radio, and then silence. And it's your job as the crew of the ISV Gemini to go and board the, the Icarus and to find out what happened. So you are the crew of the ship, and this is, if you've ever seen movies like Event Horizon, it's the, you can tell those sorts of stories. Okay, so let's have another look at these uh, characters over here before we move on to the next module. So we've got people like the character, the captain, the pilot, the navigator, engineer. You can even be the company man or woman, which is pretty exciting. So you can add that, oh, you know, we're paying for this and what is it going to get us kind of vibe to the story, the medic and the scientist. So if you like movies like Alien, Event Horizon, I mean, there's a new Alien movie coming out. Why not uh, play a sort of a Gemini version of that? So let's take a look at the next module, which is Frost Meat High. This is a sort of a take on your classic teen supernatural romance slash drama. So think things like Vampire Diaries, Twilight, that sort of thing, except a little more serious. Frost Meat High is about a high school where a bunch of students have got supernatural powers and abilities, and there's a murder that happens. One of the fellow students goes missing, and the police and, and the det detectives start snooping around. And it's up to the students to find out what happens without getting their powers uncovered, which will obviously cast all suspicion on them. So the characters there, you can choose from different sort of types of supernatural beings, or you can even be more mortal students. Um, and what's interesting about the world building in this module, which is different from the others, is the supernatural characters have an additional set of questions to answer about their powers and how they work. So you can be vampires, werewolves, doppelgangers, witches, hybrids. So you can combine a, a witch um, vampire, for example, or a doppelganger werewolf. And uh, then we obviously have the mortals. That's a nice, exciting module. And because it's the supernatural drama wrapped around a crime story, it really is very, very different every time you play so the next module is the Loot Dilemma, and this is a bit of a, a kind of a parody spoof on your classic sort of uh, fantasy role-playing game. It's about a group of adventurers, your warriors and wizards and rogues and priests and barbarians, who've reached the, the final level of the dungeon, they've defeated the big bad, and it's time to distribute the loot. And the loot, the big treasure at the bottom of the dungeon, is not at all what they were expecting. So there's a, a bit of a drama in terms of how they are going to... Um, sort of figure out this issue. And there's lots of backstabbing and sabotaging of one another which goes on. This is a really fun module, especially as a way to spice up your regular fantasy uh, role-playing game campaigns. The next module is The Descent, and this is, I believe, the last module in the book. And The Descent is about spelunkers. It's about cave exploration, a group of people, a group of friends, college friends, who've reunited to go on this cave ad adventure for the day. And they get trapped underground. There's a cave-in, the entrance is closed, and it's about what, what they do to survive and what they do to escape. Bearing in mind that they're not alone. Or at least that's what they suspect. So those are the modules that you get inside the book. I hope that this has given you a bit of an insight into the game and the kinds of stories that you can tell. And if you're interested, please consider backing the game. And uh, thank you so much for all your support. Keep sharing it on Facebook and Twitter and social media. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.